Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the many, many wonderful faces that have just appeared, all members of the Dwight community spread far and wide across the globe. Firstly, wherever you are, thank you for joining, and I sincerely hope that you, your family, friends and loved ones are in the best of health in these unprecedented times. <clears throat> However, as we've seen for the last few months, unprecedented times can often bring about unprecedented acts of kindness and love to celebrate the very best of the human spirit. With that ethos in mind, it is with great, great pleasure that I welcome you all to the inaugural online virtual graduation of the Dwight class of 2020. As the diploma coordinator, I have, of course, self-appointed myself as your compare for the graduation, mainly as the desire for a coordinator to coordinate runs very deep. And naturally, as the host of this very showbiz ceremony, I've also coordinated a lavish after party in my sitting room, where I will, of course, be observing strict social distancing laws by swing dancing on my own, having a cup of tea on my own, and singing my favorite Celine Dion song. Before then, we are here to celebrate the wonderful cohort of Dwight School London's class of 2020. For those of you who are not joining the call directly, the graduation is being live streamed and also recorded. The link will be sent in today's newsletter. In terms of the programme, well, thankfully that is the last Celine Dion you will hear for the next hour, but the programme is as follows. We have an array of teachers from Dwight who will be giving personal speeches for each student for around a minute. Now, just to clarify, Miss Kennedy, that rule does also apply to you. At the end of each teacher's words, the student will then speak again for around a minute before holding up their Dwight graduation certificate. My final point is that can I please request everyone on the call to continue to mute their microphone to ensure we get the best quality of audio, unless, of course, you are speaking. And for those of you who have downloaded the grid function in Google Meet, please do take that off to ensure we get a greater pictorial focus on each speaker. Now, without further ado, let me please invite Mrs. Cobbin to give a few words on Dwight's class of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Barry, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, it's just lovely to see your faces. It really is special to see you there. Our smiling faces of the Dwight community, thank you for joining us. And for those people who are joining us on the live stream, thank you for joining us as well. Now, I have on very strict instructions to be brief, and as it should be, because this is, uh, this is an occasion for the students, and I'm sure you're all looking forward to hearing about them and from them. But I did want to just uh, start with a few words of welcome from me and a few words about um, the occasion. As you all know, we're part of a global family with schools around the world. And at this time of year, all of our schools are finding creative and interesting ways to celebrate their graduation. I was interested in looking at the, uh, some plans for the New York graduation and to see that they call the ceremony a commencement. I really like this idea. This is the idea that as well as uh, looking behind us to uh, where we have been and the journey we've been on, we're also looking to the future, to where it is you're going to. Uh, the graduation, at this point of time, where you stand in this pivot point, you look back to where you have graduated from, uh, to what you've achieved, the relationships you've built up, and you look forward to where you're going to, uh, whatever journey or wherever your journey takes you and what adventure you're headed to next. Uh, with uh, coronavirus, I'm sure you've come across a lot of phrases that are used a lot. And I was thinking if you uh, had a coronavirus bingo game, what phrases would go in the on the bingo balls? 
And I have to thank you, Mr. Barry. You started us off well. I was thinking on my bingo card, I would quite like to have the phrases strange times, uncertain times, unprecedented times, uncharted waters. How many times have you heard those in the last few months? I have used them myself many times. It's so much, it uh, sums up the situation we're in. Um, so at this point of time, when you're looking forward, it feels as if you're looking forward to uncertainty. However, we are always looking forward to uncertainty. Sometimes we think we are looking forward to things that are certain. For instance, I imagine six months ago, you were looking forward to the certainty of completing your IB diploma exams. How many things over the last few months that we thought were certain have proved to be otherwise? So actually, the future is always uncertain. However, I think you are really well prepared for an uncertain future, better prepared than you may realise. Unlike many your age, you have not spent the last two years remembering stuff so that you can regurgitate it on an exam paper. I know you and you are knowledgeable. You are creative and critical thinkers. You are skillful. You are resilient. You are internationally minded and you are caring. I think you are all well equipped to step forward into a future, uncertain or otherwise. And I think you are ready and willing and able to make a positive difference. We are proud of you. I hope you are proud of yourselves. Be proud of yourselves. We are grateful that we've had the opportunity to share some of your journey with you. You go with our affection and our heartfelt best wishes for a surprising but wonderful future. Congratulations and best wishes to you all. Thank you, Mrs. Cobbin, for those um, very, very heartfelt and uh, I think prescient words. We're now going to move on to speaking uh, with regards to each member of staff and uh, each student then having their minute to speak. And it's my great pleasure to firstly give a few words about Aniche. Buongiorno a tutti. Mi fa molto piacere avere lo conase di dirvi qualcosa sulla bravissima Alice. Alice, I really hope I didn't strangle the beautiful language of Italian too much. But my attempts at learning just a few words were to show my utmost respect to you as your teacher in the fact that you, of course, studied English language and literature, while, of course, remaining so quintessentially Italian. You are a young woman of passion, courage and quite extraordinary determination. Over the last 18 months, it's been a real pleasure to see you grow in confidence, stature and have a stronger belief in your own voice and opinion. Although there might have been a few tears along the way, I've always liked to believe that they were not tears of sadness, but a visible showing of your determination to succeed. I have no doubt you will achieve great things in the world of science as you look to study chemistry at either UCL or King's. I look forward to seeing the mark you will make in this world, and maybe even giving the most dramatic acceptance speech ever known at a science award ceremony. In bocca lupo. Alice, would you like to say a few words? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your words. They mean a lot to me, particularly from a teacher like you. And I want to thank everyone that has taught me throughout my four years at Wright, and I've been in multiple schools, lived in multiple countries, and yeah, in Wright, I found someone like the best teacher, and not only in the way in which they adapt the program to every single individual, but also the way in which they always support us in every decision, both in, in like a more school aspect, but also in the like outside world. Uh, I also want to thank, of course, my family uh, and my friends and all. Yeah, all the people that I mean, including me, 
Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, can I now um, please invite Mr. Dickinson to say a few words about Tess? I will with great pleasure. Hi, Tess. I know it's early where you are, very early. Uh, thanks for getting up to listen to us. Well, listen, let me tell you a bit about Tess. Um, she came to us in the NYP program a few years ago, and I was delighted. She came in as a bright, enthusiastic student with a passion for human rights, which really pleased me. When she came into my class, she did so, she was like a ball of energy. I loved it. And, but it was not only inside the class that she was a, a ball of energy. She was, um, well, I, I'll tell you a little story. I've told the parents this, I think. On the, I was outside on duty one day, and um, the kids hadn't come out yet. And all of a sudden, from the, from the corner of the, 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 the playground, I heard, Woohoo! I'm a little unicorn! And this was, this was this bouncing out into the playground. But, you know, I mean, I'd seen her, what she did in the classroom. But, you know, what she what she gave me there was a really moving moment because, you know, it said something about Tess. You know, she was talking about her being a unicorn. Oh, unicorns are unique. Tess, you are indeed unique. Anyway, as an English teacher, I had to analyse the moment. And, uh, of course, what I sort of, my, my, my outcome or my what I was thinking about after that. She's not only, you know, a great energy in the classroom, she is charming and kind outside the room too. So as she goes forward, Northeastern, I believe, the beautiful city of Boston, uh, she's going to be studying criminology and sociology, I believe. Her MUN skills will come in really useful there, I have no doubt. But, um, but as you do move forward, Tess, I, I just want you to remember this. Many of you parents out there will, will know this expression, never lose the child. And so what I say to you, Tess, our little unicorn, as I might call you, as you go forward, as you try to change the world, remember when the world sometimes grows a little more serious, a little more disappointing, as it perhaps is now, I want you to remember, never lose the child and, and just be sure to enjoy this beautiful world in all its capacities. I bet I'll wish you the best. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to say how grateful I am to have been the, afforded the opportunities I have. I'm happy to have been a part of the school where students' creative and most wildest ideas can become a reality. Um, and although it's difficult to always stay aware of what's happening in the world, um, Mr. Dickinson, along with a lot of my other incredible teachers throughout the years, have helped me to pay attention to the finer details, to construct meaningful experiences that I've had, um, something that's been an invaluable part of my Dwight and IB education. I couldn't have gotten where I am without the support of my friends, family, and school community. So thank you all for helping me think and understand the world better. I wish to, I wish, um, you all the best of luck in the future endeavors. Tess and um, Mr. Dickinson, thank you very, very uh, much. Um, I now would like to invite uh, Miss Vallette to give a few words about Julia. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as some of you may know, Julia was the only student taking French uh, so we got to know each other really well. Um, aside from being that lovely, hardworking, uh, committed student, uh, this is what I also learned about Julia. Over the past two years, I saw Julia evolve. Uh, for example, her hairstyle, long, short, curly, straight, with a fringe, without, sometimes all the styles in one week. Uh, but we'll go back to the topic of her later. And also she became a vegan, so I was interested and I would ask, oh, what do you cook, what do you eat? And she would say, well, I have no time and I don't know what to cook, so I eat pasta most of the time. <laughs> so um, from what I gathered, to be honest, I think Julia's diet was mainly pasta and coffee. 
Uh, for example, <laughs> Monday morning, we had our first lesson together. Um, and I would always ask her, oh, Julia, how are you? Comment ça va? All of this was in French, by the way. And, um, and her answer would always depend on whether she had had time to have that morning coffee yet or not. Something else that happened on this more Monday morning lesson that Julia and I we have a common point is that we do prefer to sleep a little bit longer rather than have breakfast. So throughout the lesson, we, our bellies would make these little growling noises, like, you know, when you're hungry. So that was what was happening most of the lesson. And we were just apologizing to each other the whole time. Coming back to hair, um, Julia wants to be a hairdresser. And as you know, she speaks three languages fluently. Uh, so I can picture her being this stylish, successful hairdresser in London, Disneyland, Paris, Hollywood, or oh, I've heard of that really uh, fancy place, I think Brian Barnett. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, please, Julia, come back. Uh, it was such a pleasure to see you. Come back and say hi, and uh, over to you. Thank you so much, Miss. Um, I want to thank not only you, but all the teachers that Notice my hairstyles. Um, I put a lot of effort into it every morning, <laughs> so I'm glad I'm glad everyone noticed. Um, but yeah, I want to thank everyone. I know it's such a difficult time to have this graduation, but I'm just happy that we can have it all together. We can spend some time and you know, kind of enlighten this time of, of need where we we need you know more people to be together and connect. And yeah, so thank you so much for the speech and thank you to all the other teachers that helped me throughout the year. I know. I'm sure it's been hard for you all to not see our lovely faces every day. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for those uh, your wonderful insights onto Julia's hair there, Miss Follette. And uh, Julia, thank you very much for keeping us all entertained with your wonderful hairstyles and uh, your general wonderful atmosphere around the school. I'd now like to invite Mr. Brown uh, to speak about uh, ACMA. Hello, Akmar. So, it's been a pleasure teaching and learning with you in computer science. You are a sharp and inquisitive student, and it kept me on my toes to field all your probing questions, especially as I got the impression that, like Colombo, you actually knew the answers. So, for your internal assignment, your school bus tracking app was your Sagrada Familia a monumental effort of self-directed learning. Some mornings I could make out, I think, the code etched on your eyeballs. The tracking app was typical of your ambition and resourcefulness. And if you're free over the next few weeks, I think the British government could do with some help developing something similar. So, you plan to travel, live and laugh next year. I can't think of a better plan but I do hope that you give some teachers and lecturers in the future the benefits of your inquisitive questions and intelligence. All the best, Akmar. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for your kind words. My experience at Dwight has been very humbling. Um, being exposed to such a small type in a year really taught me how warm a school experience could be. Mr. Ba uh, Mr. Brown has been nothing but a friend to me the past couple of years, and I mean that in the most respectful way. Um, I'd like to thank him and all my fellow graduates for making the Ivy memorable. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Brown, for a lovely speech, and thank you, Akmar, as well. It's really, really nice to see you as well, Akmar. Uh, moving swiftly on, uh, we now have uh, Ms. Kennedy to give a few words about Dear Daniel. Or not. Uh, I think this is the first time ever that Miss Kennedy has refused the stage. So um, we're hoping to get Miss Kennedy back soon. What's my oh, name? there we go. Oh, yeah. On you go, Fiona. Okay. So, right. Should I start again? Did you not hear me? Or? Oh. Him, right. right, so what can I say about Daniel? Well, there's plenty to say. Can you hear? Right, um, well, I've taught him since he was in M1. 
And I've always loved listening to all his ideas and his suggestions. And I would say he is highly eclectic, and he does have a fantastic sense of humour. And um, I loved directing him in the Bugsy Malone, and I've always really enjoyed working with him. Um, also in the film school videos from Supergirl to the mockumentary, which he did. And I'll never forget his football commentaries and his Donald Trump impersonation. I'll have to put a spin. And uh, we've done many, many plays together. But this year, he surpassed himself with his collab and his solo play. Now, Daniel, what does this mean to you? What does it mean to anyone? Well, to me, it means how imaginative um, Daniel is with his original and witty interpretation of Cantor's Theatre of Death. And who would have guessed that Daniel would have chosen that? Anyway, uh, Lancaster or Sussex Uni will be really lucky to have you. And I know that you'll be back because um, well, your mum works at the school downstairs, so I'll be sitting there. And uh, I will be trying to find out what you've been up to. And um, I really wish you an amazing, fantastic amount of luck. And um, here's your future. Well done, Daniel. Thank you. Wow, um, I can't believe I'm actually saying this because I don't think I've ever said this before, but I'm actually kind of speechless. Oh, and, oh. I know. <laughs> well done, Miss. Um, so, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone from Miss Kennedy, oh, uh, Miss Troutman, to Mr. Dickinson, to kind of Mr. Bowery. I want to say sorry if I'm somewhat annoyed you all talked a bit too much, but I. It's just a thank you because you. Yeah, you're right. You just made me. Just turn that one on. So I just made me just yeah everything and just thanks. And I'll see you soon, Miss. Good. All right, lovely to see you. Thank. Um, thank you, Miss Kennedy, for lovely words there. And Daniel, uh, it's always, always been a pleasure. Don't, don't ever think otherwise. Um, moving swiftly on, I would like to now invite Mr. Carpenter to give a few words about Tarkam. Hello, everyone. Um, does everybody know what a greyhound is? Um, they can run at lightning speeds, have been clocked at a whopping 72 kilometres per hour. And after these extreme bouts of effort, Greyhounds can spend up to 18 hours a day sleeping. Now, Tarkan works in extreme bursts, excelling in the sciences and in arts, but how often have his teachers and peers heard him explain that he is very tired? Aside from being one of the hardest working and most exhausted students in D2, Tarkan has asked more questions than almost any other student I'm aware of, and impressively, Hardly any of those have ever had anything to do with the course that he's studying. I would like to thank Tarkan very much for taking such an important part in the morning concerts recently, which have brought so much joy to so many people. Tarkan, your chosen path in biomedical sciences at King's College London would see you eventually haunting the same halls and lecture theatres that I once wandered. Before that, however, I wish you luck in securing your year-long position at the European Youth Office in Madrid, working with the European Solidar Solidarity Corps. It shows that you want to make a difference in the world. Tarkan, you will be remembered at Dwight, and mostly for all the right things. Thank you for your efforts and your enthusiasm. Good luck with your future. Over to you, Tarkan. Yeah, so um, honestly, again, uh, wow, that was a big, like, a, let's say a tsunami coming straight at me. That was a lot of, you know, kind words. And I did prepare something to say, so I'm going to go ahead. So thanks a lot for, you know, accepting to talk about me on this milestone moment of my life. And of course, thank you for your kind words. And I am grateful um, to you, not only because of the speech you gave today, but for all of you, like everything you've done in the few years you've been at the school, and it's changed my life. 
Um, I know I have tested your patience on more than one occasion, but we, perse we persevered together. And it's thanks to you and all the science teachers that I had, um, it allowed me to follow the science career and, um, you know, make me wonder what's next in the world. And um, also the science career of going into teaching as well, that's always an option for me. And yeah, also, you know, a little overwhelming. And I hope we, you know, our paths cross again soon. And finally, I want to thank everybody, my friends, all the staff and the whole Dwight community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sargan. And uh, may I say, wonderful outfit there. Very, looking very dapper in your uh, bow tie and your waistcoat. Um, we're now going to move, uh, thank you for again also for those words, Mr. Carpenter. We're now going to move to Ms. Sincheva to have a few words about ALP. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all well. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to talk about ALP. I think over the last two years, I've known ALP to be very enthusiastic uh, towards maths, um, showing good attitudes, even though every now and then we, we know when ALPs come in, his attitude is always relaxed. You can see he's always um, so chilled in a way. So it's, it always is, seemed to me that he has everything under control. One thing I've definitely learned about Alp is, is that if he said something on his mind, he'll definitely achieve it. So I do hope Alp, you will enjoy university. And I keep saying to everyone, first year of university, make sure to enjoy it. And the, sec and the other two, three years, make sure you work really hard, obviously. Thank you so much for allowing me to, to teach you. Thank you so much for being in my class as well. You've been absolutely wonderful. So I wish you all the best. Uh, I would like to also thank you for like teaching me and the whole class. And I really enjoyed it as well. And uh, I really would like to thank all of my teachers uh, besides you as well. And I actually don't know what to say because it's like, it's not every day that you graduate. So I guess too excited and I don't really know what to say, but um, I really thank uh, you and all of my teachers for all the support uh, for me to adapt since I joined late, like at B1. Um, and I would like to congratulate my friends for graduating as well. Al, thank you very much. Um, really nice to see you there. And uh, thank you, Ms. Sanchez, for those words. Um, I'm now going to invite uh, Mr. Sanchez to say a few words about Chanad. Unfortunately, Chanad can't be with us, um, but uh, very much looking forward to hearing what Mr. Sanchez has to hear about him. Say about him, brother. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like, can you hear me? Yeah, OK, thank you. I would like to speak about uh, Chanat today. Uh, Chanat uh, joined the Dwight community in 2015. He moved uh, here all the way from Hungary uh, with his family in order for his dad to establish himself uh, in the business uh, that he does in design uh, furniture and in order for the two kids, for Chinge and Chanat to have an IB education. Only after five years, I think, Chana, you can be very proud of yourself for what you have achieved. Not only you have finished uh, your diploma, but you can speak several languages now. And you've got many reasons uh, to be uh, proud. Chana is moving on to study uh, business management. I don't think it is a surprise uh, that is following the steps of uh, his dad. In fact, I actually believe that he's working at the moment uh, with, uh, with his dad, whilst he's uh, not able to be here with us uh, today. Uh, Chad is very appreciative of uh, his uh, IB education. He's always told me that. He's told me that he knows that this is going to open doors to him. Uh, and on a personal level, uh, Chad has become a different person as a result of uh, his uh, IB education. He's definitely a lot more open-minded now. He often tells me about how he's traveling sometimes when he goes back to Hungary and sees that you know, somehow he's moved on from uh, the type of person that he used to be 
Uh, he feels a little bit like different now when he sees his cousins and his uh, family over there. Uh, from a personal point of view, we all know that China is a quiet, reserved uh, man. That's not to say that he hasn't got like brilliant qualities about him. He's got great family values. He's a really, really good friend of his friends. Those are. Uh, those uh, students, those people who are lucky to have to know him uh, and to get to know him on a personal level know what I'm talking about. Chan has got an excellent sense of humour as well. He's tricked me so many, many times in the past year about him not uh, not doing his, his homework, uh, for example, and then having a laugh about that. And uh, also, when I think about him and his uh, impeccable manners, there is a there is a sentence that he he's said many times in Spanish, you know, which is. And it goes something like, this is very fine, sir, or this is fine, sir, which always makes me laugh. Uh, touching on that as well, I would like to remind you, Chana, that you are a very fine man, that you're going to do very, very well, and I wish you all the best. So congratulations on your graduation today. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Uh, and I really hope that uh, Chana is able to see those fine words that you just uh, said about him. I'd like to now uh, invite Dr. McCulloch uh, to come to the online screen and speak about Jay. Seem to be taking my time. Uh, can you hear me now? Ah, I think I'm on. Yes, forgive me, I'm a little bit slow on the old connection. Yeah, a real pleasure to talk about Jay. Man in my own spirit, very self-effacing, respectful, polite young man. Um, got a lovely way about him. What I notice here is that he's got this charming ability. Uh, he's got this autocorrect facility, which is the can. There's an audible, sometimes an audible self admonishment of when he makes a mistake. So what I noticed, he had a self-correcting mechanism, which is always, it didn't take long before he actually solved the problem after getting it wrong initially. So that, it reminded me of a, a, a joke because he's going off onto Northwestern University. I had a little chase up on Northwestern and I noticed what he's doing in his degree. He's doing sort of cyber security and systems security management, but there's also a bit of machine learning component. So there's a, a little joke because I know there's a horrible module within that um, computer science degree, which is the eloquent speaker uh, component, which I'm sure all computer scientists are looking forward to doing. So here's a little joke for him to replay when he's actually doing that, which is, okay, interviewer, what is your biggest strength? Jay, I am an expert in learning machines. Interviewer, what is six plus ten? Jay, zero. Interviewer, nowhere near. It's sixteen. Jay, okay, it's 16. Interviewer, what's 10 plus 20? Jay, it's 16. So it's a, it's a computer science joke, forgive me. So that's a, so that's Jay, he autocorrects, but he autocorrects faster than a machine. I was actually tracing just part of my due diligence, I was tracing the, um, the alma mater of his college, Amit Khoury, he seems to be ahead of the curve, head of Buffett and all that. He used to, he made his billions in, um, he made his billions in fitting aeroplanes with seats. He's got out of that game ahead of Buffett, realized that aeroplanes are no longer for the future. He's in biomedical sciences. He's now in biomedical sciences and longevity studies down in Jupiter Island in Florida. So the reason why I mention that is because I can now, I, I've identified his benefactor, well, the guy who sponsors the college, as I can, I can pick his address. He's next. He's just down the road from Celine Dion, William, William Bibby Priest, I know. Celine Dion and Tiger Woods. All that comes from a, a cursory two-minute Google search. So the one thing I would recommend is for everybody to know, I looked at Jay. He's got a LinkedIn profile. Yeah, all right, you might think about keeping it. Instagram, maybe dwell, and then Facebook, dwell. Be careful of your, be careful of your footprint now. You're going to be in cybersecurity, system security. Think about a cursory two-minute look. Be sure what do you want to actually see out there. Everybody take note. So, Jay, wish you well. Uh, computer science, spot on. I think it's a great idea. And I think um, it's the cutting edge. 
let's hope we've got some machine learning coming forward. But you're more than a machine, you're a human, you're a wonderful human being, so good luck. Cheerio. Do we have a few words from Jay? Jay, you there? Yes, yeah, so, sir. Um, before I start my speech, I act, um, so you have to correct one thing that um, I'm not going to um, Northwestern University, I'm going to Northeastern University. Um, so you have to correct that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, first, thank you so much for your speech. And for me, um, it's been four and a half years since I joined the white community, and that was a huge change for me. And I met a lot of interesting people with different backgrounds and perspectives. Um, so it, one of you, like you, <laughs> I got a lot of chance to know physics very well. And I've experienced a lot of things like another culture and different, uh, different ways of thinking that I never thought of. I never thought of if I was in Japan. And I also want to say thank you so much for teachers and also my friends who supported, supported and inspired me and guided me to capture great opportunities in the future. Thank you so much and keep in touch. Jay, thank you very much. Uh, apologies for Mr. McCullough getting your uh, uh, choice of university wrong there, but um, I'm sure you have a wonderful, wonderful time uh, wherever you go. Um, continuing well, with... Good, correct. <laughs> Continuing with our, uh, our Japanese students, uh, I'd like to invite Yunko uh, to speak a few words about Reika. Hello, can you hear me? Can you? Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm a bit nervous because I usually speak Japanese in public. So, but okay, the, the Reika, so she has been, it has been almost five years since she came to Dwight School. And uh, she has, she, sorry, she has been always calm and kind and uh, helping others and always making efforts step by step for her studies. So uh, she was, she's a star student, I think. Uh, and I remember once that we had a uh, lot of boys in the class and there's lots of energy going on. And, Leika was always my side and helped me and tried to calm the boys down and it was, I remember. And also she was one of the leader a few years ago when they did the student did a Japanese dance in the international evening and she was one of the leader and to make everybody you know, together. And so I was so impressed at the time. So, uh, so I'm sure she's going to do very well, you know, for the future. And uh, I had she is go she has to take exam for the university from September for few university in Japan, so it's going to be hard for her because she has to carry on studying. But I'm sure she's going to achieve what she wants to. And uh, the, she told me she might take the course for the education in university and to be a teacher in future. So it makes me smile, and uh, I'm really hoping she's going to come back to Dwight as a teacher in the future, and we can t teach together the students. Uh, so congratulations, and sotsugyo uh, omedetto, Reika-chan. Thank you very much. Miss um, Grant, thank you for your kind and heartwarming message. Um, I'm glad that I could have experienced a lot of things and studied for five years in Dwight. And I want to thank you, everyone, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Great, and lovely, lovely to see you. And Yuka, thank you for those uh, wonderful, wonderful words. Um, I'd now like to invite Mr. Winter to give a few words about Clara. Good afternoon. Um, this is going to be an easy one, and I will do it in 60 seconds, I promise. So I've had the pleasure of teaching Clara for three years now, and I was quite intrigued to know that she had picked me to speak about her because she didn't speak to me at all in M5. So clearly we've done some progress in D1 and D2, and it's an absolute honour. 
And there's a lot to say about you. You are an intellect. Your math skills are insane. It was a very, very cushy two years for me because between you and your classmates, it was more guiding you towards an answer because you all knew it the entire time. As well as being a, an outstanding mathematician, obviously you're a stunning musician and watching you perform during the uh, music festival was just, it was, a, it was a great side of you that really adds to what a good and outstanding person that you are. Um, but of course, for me, the most important thing is that your fashion sense was unparalleled. And I am very disappointed you didn't leave behind your Canada Goose jacket. But that's a discussion for another day, and I will email you about that. Um, I think when you move on to study international relations at King's, there's not much that I can tell you to do other than to keep your personality, keep your spirit, because you are a pleasure to teach. You make a teacher's life easy. You make them want to be in the class with you and to give them all that they can beyond their knowledge of their subject, but their passion and their need to want to help you as a person. Um, obviously, beyond being just your maths teacher, you thought of me as your Apple support service. Uh, we spent numerous hours figuring out how you downloaded viruses onto your computer. And there was no regrets. When, there's, when you are in need, I will always be here to support you. And so feel free to email whenever you need. Um, and I do wish you all the best at your candidates. And we're going to do great things with study maths. So I'll pass it on to Clara. Um, hi, sir. I just want to say that I'm really flattered and I, I really want to thank you for liking my style, teaching me maths, being my good friend and guide. And like you, you taught me so much, not only like you could always correct me when I was on the wrong path, like, like when I was thinking too much about one like simple question and you would always um, give a, you would always um, give us the freedom to talk to each other and discuss and to really get the answer by ourselves rather than memorizing all the equations. I really like that, and I think um, I just want to appreciate uh, all your support and for other teachers' support. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed my uh, three years in Twi, and it's such. Um, warm community that it's so special um, to me it, it will be the, the best experience of high school ever thank you Clara real real delight to see you and uh, thank you for those uh, very very warm words uh, thank you for Mr Winter I think that was slightly longer than 60 seconds Mr Winter but we weren't <laughs> worth counting um, I'd now like to um, introduce, uh, sorry, introduce uh, welcome Mr. Sanchez back to the screen uh, to speak a few words about Alexander. Hello, Alexander. Who would have told us that we would be here today? Um, Alex has been at the school, at Dwight School, since uh, 2005. So if you do the maths, that means that he was about three years of age when he first joined the school. Uh, just to say that he's spent the best years of his life uh, uh, there is an understatement. In fact, he's spent all of his life there, you know, which is uh, quite remarkable. Uh, knowing that he's going to do marketing and psychology doesn't surprise me in the slightest. In fact, I think uh, it is uh, the perfect combination for you, Alex. In terms of uh, marketing, you know, I do remember some of the chats that we have had during our Spanish lessons. Well, not during the lessons, but after or before, you know, about some of the ideas that you had in terms of uh, how to make uh, money, where it's going to be the next like, business idea, you know. At times I thought they were quite like, far-fetched, but, you know, if you, if you ever become a millionaire, thanks to any of those ideas, just, re just remember that I was there to support you and to inspire you as well. Uh, in terms of uh, psychology, I mean, uh, uh, Everybody who knows you, uh, they know the, the incredible human being uh, that you are. 
and the qualities that that you've got uh, to go into into this career path. First of all, you're incredibly uh, in, introspective. You know yourself very very well. Uh, this is very this is very strange for somebody as young uh, as you are. Uh, I've never known anybody so young as you and knowing uh, knowing himself so well. We were parents here for you know, they were so easy uh, for me in that you will be doing all of the talking. This is what I need to work on. This is exactly what I need to do. This is the progress I've got. This is what I'm going to do next time. As well as that, you are incredibly, incredibly caring. Uh, you've been very, very uh, supportive during the past two years, uh, in particular, not only of me, but the other students in the class, uh, your peers. Uh, the work that you've done with uh, Daniel has been fantastic. And the words that you, you said to him, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, to celebrate uh, his success as well, uh, just taught me something else uh, about you. You're somebody who's not afraid to talk about uh, feelings uh, and emotions, you know, and I think that is very, very important. I think it's about time that young people and society in general can talk openly about mental health, you know, and I have enjoyed like, having conversations uh, uh, with you uh, in the past. On top of that, you are a really, really grateful person. You've made me feel that always so good about the work that I was doing with the class, with your words of uh, appreciation, with uh, little cards that you wrote to me, like little messages that uh, you wrote to me. And I think uh, is uh, you're going to do very, very well uh, in future. No, no question about that. So if I haven't persuaded or convinced uh, everybody of the kind of person that you are, well, I, I'm, I'm sure that they would agree at least in one thing with me. I think this, uh, in the 12 years or so that I've been at this school, I've never met anybody with the quirkiest or weirdest or best uh, sense of dress and fashion, you know, and I think that is excellent uh, that you are able to express yourself, you know, and uh, that's the best thing that you can do, be yourself because you're great. So I wish you all the best and I really, really congratulate you on your graduation today. So, thank you. Hello, right, first off, I'd just like to say thank you so much for those words, Mr. Sanchez. They, they genuinely hit home and it's been it's been quite a journey over the countless years that I've had with you, not to mention Miss Kennedy as well. That stuck with me pretty much, I think, M2, Bugsy Malone. I'm pretty sure everyone here is going to have an experience of that as well. And all of the new teachers who have joined me on my journey, whether that was through NYP or through Diploma as a whole, I'm very appreciative for every single one of you. From my family who's here with me, <laughs> I've got my dog below as well, but you know, I don't really want to disturb him right now. And all of my friends as well for supporting me through all of my difficult times which I've gone through inside of school and everything there. But it's been a journey and a half and I just want to say thank you to every single person who has helped in any way possible throughout it because it would have been a lot more difficult without you guys. So that's what I'm going to say. Thank you. Uh, Alexander, thank you. That was uh, really, really touching words there. Um, and may I say, hair's looking fantastic in lockdown. Um, I just so it now going to move to. Um, I have the real pleasure of speaking about uh, Mira. Mira, a name that in many Romance languages is associated with wonder or wonderful. In some Slavic languages, it forms the word for peace, while in Sanskrit. It can often be associated with the symbol of a limitless ocean. To me, there are few people to better encapsulate the meaning of their own name than Mira. A young woman bursting with wonderful ideas, with a global outlook across the seas and oceans of time, with a fervent belief to ensure we live in a more peaceful and a just world. Having spent five years myself teaching in the city of Boston, it is with great pleasure to know that Mira's next stage in her academic career will be a student at Boston University in the United States, with the eventual ambition of her becoming a human rights lawyer. Mira, I can think of few people better suited for this occupation. It has been a pleasure teaching you, having your incisive, curious, creative, 
kind outlook on life, omnipresent in my classroom over the last two years. And from all of us at Dwight, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for the many, many assemblies, for your vocal opinions and your ideas that you promulgated across the school and only partially crashing into the Dwight minibus. From Barnet to Boston, Mira, I wish you the very, very best of luck. So thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, I think it's safe to say that I could not have done it without you. Um, and I think many people will agree that you've been such an instrumental part of our diploma at Dwight. I can't count the amount of times that you've stayed behind at school until like cost six, seven to help us with our, our uni applications or staying behind to help us do a past paper, despite saying in your own words that you have a life of your own and that you could be doing other things with your time. Yet you always dedicated so much time to us and we are so grateful for that. Um, I know I certainly am. I'm so grateful for all the teachers who have taught me during my time at Dwight. I've been here for uh, over 10 years now and all the teachers who have taught me have made such an impression on my life. Obviously, thank you to my family as well, to my mom and I guess my brother because he's here too. Uh, and my dad who's on another call on the screen here who couldn't quite figure out how to mute himself. Thank you very much um, to him too. Um, and of course, thank you to my friends who have supported me through my bad days at Dwight and my good days. I couldn't have done it without you. I wish we were all together celebrating today and hopefully we will be soon. So thank you to everyone. Uh, Mira, thank you so much. Uh, great graduation bunting, may I say, in, in your background. Looking fantastic. Yeah, I'm totally decorated the whole room for you, just see. <laughs> Amazing. Looks, looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, no, it's been a real, real pleasure. It's my pleasure to speak. Um, moving swiftly on, I'd like to invite Mrs. Sen to speak about Claire. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, it was a privilege to hear that I was given the opportunity to speak for Claire. Um, I have been her PP supervisor uh, in M5, and of course she was one of the main students to uh, participate in the uh, Nepal visit, um, CAS Nepal visit in 2018. Uh, Claire, what can I say? You are probably, I would say, probably the only student I know who managed to demonstrate all the nine IB learner profiles within a seven day but every day visit of our trip to Nepal. It was a remarkable asset. You have got all the IB learner profiles of being a caring person, a risk taker, a knowledgeable person. You absolutely nailed it over there. And everyone fell in love with you. And I think the new journey, the new path that you're taking to go into the hospitality um, uh, area is going to be exactly right for you. Uh, the only thing that possibly came close to beating these qualities you have was perhaps the array of shoes you wore, which dazzled everybody. Um, so jokes apart, um, Claire, you are an amazing young girl. Keep those assets, uh, do well, but I'm not going to say goodbye because uh, in our country, goodbye is not a word we have. I will say, uh, see you again uh, in Nepal, probably, in the missed opportunity that we had uh, uh, to go out there in April. But wonderful to have had the opportunity to spend so much time and be a part, little part of your education at Dwight. Thank you. Mrs. Sen, thank you so much. I'm just checking, is Claire there with us? Uh, yes, uh, I'm here. Fantastic, Claire. On you go. Uh, thank you, Miss Sen, for your kind words. I'm so grateful to have been a student at Dwight. And I'm so happy because my dad got posted here. And I'm so grateful because of this opportunity of being posted here that I got this opportunity to meet these lovely people in Dwight. Uh, I got to experience um, the open-mindedness of everybody and learn from great and wonderful teachers. And I'm so happy for this two and a few months that I've spent with you guys. It was incredible for me. And I will remember every moment I've spent with my classmates and my teachers and my friends. Thank you. 
Thanks, Claire. That was very, very, um, some wonderful heartfelt words there. Um, I'd now like to invite Dr. Troutman uh, to speak a few words about Coco. Hello. Can you hear me? We can indeed, yes. Linda, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm afraid I'm not going to emul emulate your fine ling linguistic skills and give this in Chinese. I will give it in English. The first conversations Coco and I had set the stage for many more, given our shared interest in art and history. And it seems to me her passion for art is matched by, by, her, by, her, by her keen... I know. She taught me a lot about the Beijing Stars exhibition and the signaling of a new era for artists in the Deng Xiaoping area, uh, Ping era period, all to, all to end, of course, in repression and suppression. We spoke about Ai Weiwei, we exchanged film titles about dissident Chinese artists, and I've learned much from her, and I'm grateful for those enlightening conversations. Coco intends to pursue her art in the coming years with her ambition and her curiosity to understand the wider context, role of the visual arts I predict for her every success, her own artistic journey, of a thousand miles has already begun with a single step. And as another Chinese philosopher advised, do not be afraid to travel slowly, only be afraid to stand still. So congratulations to you, Coco. It's been a pleasure to work together and all the very best go with you on your journey. And please remember to invite us to your first exhibition. I turn now to Coco. Thank you so much, Miss. That was such a cute speech. I, um, <laughs> first of all, thank you so much uh, to you, Miss Troutman, and to Miss uh, Murnahan. Um, you guys are like my favorite teachers, and also shout out to the History Gang. <laughs> it was a pleasure to meet you guys in this school, and every day going to History Lesson was like, a really um, the best experience because we get to talk about a um, subject we're passionate about, share many perspectives, and really open my eyes about the world through like my favorite subject. Um, through the years of Dwight, I've met many people that I would like to thank to. Thank you, Miss Ross, who's my art teacher. Um, yes, <laughs> our our lesson at our class is really small. There's only me and Miss Ross, and therefore we get to know each other quite well. And she has been really supportive for my, uh, for, to me in my artistic journey. Thank you for uh, Miss Lee, who's my Chinese teacher. And um, it was really nice to have known you. It was a great pleasure to be taught by you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dickinson, for single-handedly saving my English grades. <laughs> my, my other, <laughs> uh, just English in general and my essays. Thank you so much. Also, uh, thank you very much to my tutor and um, Ms. Sincheva for saving my math. And like, <laughs> yes, it, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> In general, um, it's been a great year studying in Dwight, and I wish everyone the best in the future. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, thank you for that lovely, lovely speech, uh, and uh, as well as Dr. Um I'd now like to move on to, to invite Mr. Turner to come to uh, screen to speak about Sterling. So this is this is marked with really chapter because the uh... oh and also thank you Mr Turner for helping us with <laughs> our design <laughs> Mr Turner <laughs> thank you. hi Sterling hi family O'Neill looking great there almost like Jamaican style set going on great perspective. So let's see, 60 seconds on Sterling. That's going to be challenging, to say the least. Um, I started to teach Sterling in M5, and that was kind of a pickup, and to try to put together the previous four years of whatever was going on with her design class. But she uh, scooped that up admirably and did really well at the end of NYP. And I was absolutely disappointed 
to lose her temporarily to the other sciences. But I guess the lure of design was just too strong. And uh, eventually you made your way back across to uh, continue to do your diploma in design and technology. We managed to get through the extended essay together. Um, sometimes that was tough, but we got there. Um, so I started to think about what I was really going to say about you and, um, and not get fired. And um, I thought to myself, well, okay, I'm going to have to look at some concepts that are to do with what makes up a Dwight student, okay? And how I would put, wish to put together a designed uh, student or even just a Dwight student. And uh, yes, the uh, learner profile less, yes, I can look at all these wonderful things that the IB tries to slot us into little groups with. But there's two that stand out about you, Sterling. Two that really shine through. We could put these into being a good communicator, but you have a really strong empathic sense about you. You're natural with people. And that comes across in a your really friendly manner. It's not false. It's just something that you do. You can pull a group of people together. And um, that, that really is the epitome of what it is to be a team player. As you go forward to, to, to university to study and to work as a computer scientist, that's, that's an essential thing for you to keep hold of, to, to maintain that you can be that person that can pull that team together when it's at a high or when it's at a low. And that's where you're really going to find that those strengths start to shine through again. But the second thing that I really admire about you is your tenacity. I can't think, and I did try to think very hard, I can't think of a time where I looked back and thought, no, Sterling's just going to give up. Because you don't. That tenacity has carried you right the way through, all the way to here. And it's going to keep getting better and better and better. Every single task that I've put in front of you, you've risen to. And so, Sterling, I'm going to get to the end of this 60 seconds and a bit. So much for everything you've brought to every single class that we've been in together. I really hope that the future is very, very bright for you. And, yeah, please don't get me fired. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. I promise I won't get you fired. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, a thank you to everyone um, coming from this uh, really big American Catholic school to this tiny international school. It's just like a crazy mind shift. And I'm just so glad that we made this decision to move to London, because if we didn't, I wouldn't have been able to meet so many amazing people, so many amazing teachers, friends. I wouldn't have been able to make all of these amazing memories. And I've, with Dwight, I've been able to create bonds that I'm going to have forever. And I just am so glad that I got to experience all of this at Dwight. So thank you, Dwight. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, parent, my parents. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. Sterling, uh, lovely to see you. Uh, fantastic blue hair, may I say, looking great. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you all as well, uh, Mr. Turner, giving those words. Um, I'm now going to move uh, on to invite uh, Mr. Dickinson back to speak about Abdullah. I think I'm, hello. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Um, but when I found out I had to speak, um, am I speaking, Mr. Barry? Okay. Uh, when I found out that I had to speak about Abdullah, uh, I was absolutely delighted. Um, and I, I started thinking about the memories that we shared together in, you know, in the classroom from MIP to DP and, um, and, you know, one of the things that I, I, I do remember are some of the connections that, that he made in the classroom. So, for example, um, you know, we've read God knows how many texts, you know, as of a salesman, glass menagerie, merchant of Venice, you know, above all. And, and I mentioned merchant of Venice because, you know, I remember one day in class, we were, we were not talking about Shakespeare or, or anything like that. We, we were talking about another text. And what um, I call it was he showed his in, insightful nature in that he linked the things that we were talking about in one text 
to the mo uh, Shylock's monologue in Merchant of Venice. And I I'll tell you, I was gobsmacked. So, you know, I tell you that little sort of story simply to, you know, shed a light on the sort of, you know, the, the academic, academic sort of ability that he, he, he does have. And, you know, outside of class, um, we developed a, a really close relationship over the years. And, um, well, I don't mind telling you this. Uh, sometimes he would come into class and uh, he, he'd say to me, you all right, bro? And I was like, um, okay. Or had he been in uh, watching it? I knew when he'd been watching a uh, Netflix, uh, an American series, because all right, bro, would become, hey, dude, dude, you know? And uh, and I thought that this was, um, well, I must say, this was in no way disrespectful. Um, I think what it represented was uh, just the nature or the, the closeness of our, our relationship. So, uh, you know, that for me has been a, a really fulfilling sort of um, uh, thing. Anyway, uh, it doesn't end here. A relationship doesn't end. As you know, I know that you're just changing direction here a little bit. I know you're, you know, you're going off to university to think about, you know, uh, studying how to become a heart surgeon. Um, well, you know, that is going to be a long, long journey. So on that journey, um, and I'd like to, you know, I extend this to Mr. and Mrs. Kayser here, because sometimes, you know, Abdullah would even admit himself that, he can be a little stubborn or, you know, sort of a little proud. Well, you know, I say that because I want you to keep in touch. Uh, if you're at a loose end in the next year or two, you know, let me know. Let the rest of us staff know. We're always here. You know, you know, this is the aftercare service, let's say. So touch base. Um, we're always happy to guide and advise. So, Abdullah, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, remember, we're always here. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, thanks a lot to you, sir, and to all my teachers who have made such a big impact on my uh, journey at Dwight. Um, you've added out uh, my academic mentor and uh, a friend, which I really appreciate. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Winter as well, who's also acted as a tutor uh, throughout NYP and DP, even though he hasn't taught me, um, and all my other teachers, of course. Um, I'd like to uh, thank my friends who have supported me throughout the journey. And of course, my parents who, you know, I wouldn't be here without them and I wouldn't be at Dwight um, without them either. And I'm so glad I enrolled here because um, this was the reason I ignited my spark. So thank you very much. Uh, Abdullah, thank you for those uh, words. May I say you're looking very smart in that shirt and tie. I've never seen you look so thank smart. Much, uh, and uh, Stevenson, thank you, Brav, for that uh, fine, fine work there. <laughs> Um, I'd no problem, like man. to um, uh, move to uh, invite Miss Lou uh, to speak about Yale. Thank you, Mr. Barry, and good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to have, uh, you know, to speak a few words about Yale. Yale, ni hao. Yale, as your Mandarin teacher, I know you are a, a determined student. You have always made me feel proud of your IA achievements. There were countless practices late night and hardworking moments. I feel really privileged and happy to have been part of this learning journey with you. Yeah, you are a special girl with a beautiful mind and loving soul. No matter if you're in school, in your Jewish community, at the care home, or the homeless people on the street, you always do whatever you can to help others. Yeah, your music is powerful. And the way you sing, while you're playing guitar, it's just so natural. Watching you teaching the children sing in the camps in Rwanda has really shaken my heart. You were so brave and kind. You were just an amazing person who would reach out and help people in need. The things you do are so meaningful. I admire you for your strength and all your courage. I know you always wanted to go back to Rwanda or to volunteer in the charity organization in Israel. No matter where you go and what you do, have faith and always believe in yourself. I wish you best of luck, stay happy, healthy, and blessed in your day ahead. I really, I really, really miss you. Thank you.
Thank you, Susie, for your kind words. I really appreciate it. And all your hard work on um, my land and rent practice and for being a friend to me. And I know you've always been there for me. And I hope we can carry on the relationship and get closer together. Um, I want to thank Dwight because Dwight has really enabled me to grow as a person. And I really appreciate being able in that environment to feel comfortable to grow into who I am and carry on growing today. There are so many skills I've learned from Dwight and international skills that have driven my personal desire to help globally and internationally. The idea of caring, um, open-minded, has really helped shape me. And there's so many, many opportunities through Dwight have offered that's also developed me. For example, Carnegie with Mr. Kraft, learning how to collaborate. Jim, the Global Issue Network, con uh, Network Conference with, in Luxembourg with Mr. Dickinson, where we saw the whole world kind of coming together, communicating together and finding a solution. And that really taught me the importance of teamwork, everyone coming together to make a difference, but also, but also determination into finding a solution and answer. And the care home with Mr. Sanchez and fellow students, where I cannot say has ultimately kind of been a game changer in my path and in my life. Learning the importance of caring for everything, you know, elderly, everyone, everything, and also the importance of being strong in our emotions and to not let our emotions stop us from carrying on doing the things and achieving um, what we want. And finally, I want to thank all the teachers for everything you've done for me and the many hours you've spent with me over the past five years personally helping me develop into who I am today. I may not be the most academic student, but the things you have taught me go way beyond academic learning. I've learned how to be an upstanding global citizen and able to move forward with, in this world, achieving my passions to better our society. And as I do this, I will have Dwight with me every step of the way. So thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you uh, for those really, really moving words. And I think the idea that education is not just within the classroom, then, you know, you've absolutely embodied that. And it's uh, really love to see you and, and your family. Um, thank you as well for uh, Susie there. Um, can I ask now Miss Delgado to speak about Victoria? Uh, yes. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope that you can hear me. Yes. Okay. So... Everything about Victoria is in her name. Uh, v for vibrant and positive personality in the classroom, no matter the day, always smiling, even if there is a Spanish listening assessment in the next two minutes. I for impeccable work ethic across the board. C for caring about others inside and outside the lessons, like those times when she was visited uh, the residents in the care home in M5. T for talented, in many languages and other subject areas. O for original, she has the mark of a unique individual. R for restful, uh, because Victoria always has had the most peaceful and calmest exterior these two years, even when things were getting very hard in her higher level subjects. I for intuitive, Victoria has the talent for reading people's minds and she has always quickly understood what teachers were expecting from her. A for admirable, admirable for having done most of the work already to become an exceptional human being. Victoria, you have made all your teachers proud, very, very proud. Starting, well, starting your neuroscience studies this year is going to be amazing and we wish you all the best. Uh, thank you very much for your contributions. Thank you very much for setting such a great example to other students at Dwight. Best of luck. Lots of victories and enjoy life. Over to you, Victoria. Well, Mr. Gado, muchas gracias. That was a lovely speech. Thank you so much. Um, you've inspired me so much, and I really am so grateful that um, my Spanish was able to grow and develop as you taught me. Um, and I also want to say thank you to all my other teachers. Mr. Dickinson, you really, truly inspired me in English and really... Um, helped me develop a passion for English literature, which I'm so grateful for, and I know that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Um, and I'm also really thankful for my science teachers um, and everyone who's really just allowed me to flourish um, in the academic environment. And all my friends who supported me, my family who's always been there, 
Um, I think Dwight is such an amazing place and it's such a great community to be a part of and it will always stay a part of me, so thank you. Uh, Victoria, thank you for those lovely words, and Miss Delgado as well. Lovely, lovely use of uh, Victoria's name. Um, can I now invite Mr. Masalingan to give a few words to speak about Luke? Thank you, Mr. Barry. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to talk about this amazing individual. Um, if there was a head boy, a face of the school, a hairstyle of the school, it would have to be this young man. Some say it's 100% natural. Some say he spends that entire weekend perfecting that hairdo. <laughs> Luke, you'll be forever known to me with this picture when we had the pleasure of going to Venice on a sports trip along with a, a number of M5s, Reyna, Reka, and Yela, Sterling, and Jay, we had an amazing time. It was exactly two years ago today. Um, it's been an amazing uh, journey with basketball. Looking, uh, I, everyone looked forward to your videos on YouTube when you would upload every game, every training session, and we really wish you all the best in your gap year next year, traveling and playing the game that you love. We also wish you all the best at one of the top universities in the world, King's College London, studying either neuroscience and psychology or medicine. A part of me, I have to admit, really wanted you to fail this year so you could come back and play senior basketball. I'm sorry to say that, Luke, but Luke, I know you know this already. You need to continue to apply yourself to your studies and your life the same way you apply yourself on the court. And I have no doubt you will achieve your dreams. Be an amazing leader and a role model, not just for hairdressers. Thank you to your family for raising a fine young man. Thank you for being you. And thank you for being an outstanding Dwight Ambassador. I hope you stay in touch and maybe be playing for us next year. And that said, Luke, the floor is yours. Thank you so much uh, for, the, for the kind words, Mr. Masalangan. And uh, if I can't play like, next year, I'll definitely come back to watch a few games. Um, I also just want to say that if it, uh, if it wasn't for Mr. Dickinson, I'd be having an actual graduation next year, but, you know, and in all serious, uh, thank you, Mr. Dickinson, for being so instrumental in me being a part of this class, and I also want to give a special uh, thank you to Mr. Delgado for being uh, the most encouraging and hardworking teacher, and uh, I want to thank all the teachers who have taught me over the years and guided me to where I am now, and I also want to uh, thank the school for giving me so, so many opportunities not only in sports, as Mr. Masalangan has said, but in travels. I've loved the trips to Venice, uh, New York, and, and every, everywhere we've been. Uh, so I want to thank the school for giving me so many opportunities in music, sports, and academics. And I also want to thank my friends, family, and parents for being so supportive of me. And finally, I want to congratulate my fellow classmates and graduates of this year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Masalingan. Great, great basketball cap. Don't know why I didn't pop mine on for the, the award ceremony. And Luke, lovely, love to see you and your family. And uh, yeah, thank you for those lovely words. Um, I'd now like to invite uh, Ms. Lusk to have a few words uh, about Mana. Hello, everybody. Uh, dear Mana, does everybody hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Dear Mana, as John F. Kennedy said in 1963, our problems are man-made, therefore they can be solved by man. And man can be as big as he wants. These are the 60s. I believe that women have a very important role to play. But I do believe he's right on this. Do not think it's impossible. Keep believing in what you feel is right. 
mana, your beliefs or your GPS system for life. And having followed you here at Dwight, I trust it will guide you in the right direction. Your choice to study environmental geoscience at UCL is already a great start. It's a choice to do something to help protect our precious planet. It's a choice to help keep us in the donut we've been talking about quite a lot recently. I'm very grateful for you to go in that direction. Mana, it was a real honor to be your teacher. I wish you all the luck in the world. Have a wonderful time at university and please keep in touch. The stage is yours, Mana. Hi, Ms. Thank you so much. That was really nice. And thank you for being a strong female role model at school. Um, to all the people who were kind or supportive when uh, any of the kind adjectives there are towards me, thank you so much. Love you. I couldn't have survived without you. Um, to all the teachers and staff, um, I really salute you. Um, I, owe it, I owe a lot to all your hard work. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I hope you all have wonderful, prosperous lives following Corona or anything. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Mana, and we all hope that you and everyone in your class 2020 also have wonderful and prosperous lives. And thank you for Miss Lust as well. Can I now invite Mr. Kraft to give uh, a few words about Annie Emma? Yeah, hello everyone. Um, uh, Aniela and, uh, and I, we are um, actually sharing a couple of things. We have uh, some things in common. Um, one of them is um, we uh, uh, celebrate our birthdays on the same day, the 11th of January. Uh, and of, of course, more obviously, uh, we both like to play the saxophone. And I thought um, I'd play a few notes to begin with. So, uh, Mr. Bowery, don't worry. I will keep it nice and short. I hope this is going to work technically. <laughs> your best part of being a student at Dwight then? Um, I can only guess, but for my part, I remember when this talented quadrilingual, what a word, young lady uh, who joined us some three years ago, took out her saxophone for the first time and began to play. Uh, she has been doing so exactly that many times ever since, and Dwight London, as well as Carnegie audiences were literally and metaphorically blown away by her musicality and by the unique warm sound of hers playing the sax. I've got to know you as a very humble but also very ambitious and de determined person, not least when you, despite pursuing your dream to becoming a, a vet, and in the very midst of the diploma IA in exam preparation madness, auditioned for a place in music at Goldsmith. That was last December, successfully so. I think I understand. You need a challenge every now and then to move on and to prove a point and to find yourself. Who would decide to take and of course pass a grade eight saxophone exam, which is the highest student grade there is by the way, in February? 
really three months before the final IB diploma examination. And so I have no doubt, Aniela, whatsoever, that you will succeed in life and achieve whatever you set your mind to. As a musician, I would like to thank you for sharing your outstanding talent and musicality with us. It was a real pleasure teaching you and I wish you all the best and I hope that you will stop by every now and uh, again uh, when, you, when you pass the school to say hello. Over to you, Aniela. Well, sir, you have made me so happy right now. Like, I was thinking, what should I say? What should I say? And just like Daniel, I feel speechless almost. But what, like, the words you just said, it made me so happy, sir. Like, my heart is pounding. I want to really thank you for your kind words, for your for playing this amazing piece. Obviously, you know my favorite piece without discussing it. And I want to say a big thank you for myself, but I'm sure for many other others because. Your music room is always open for all of us. We come to you for help in our musical studies, but also for guidance and everything. And you always give that to us. Um, again, I want to thank all the other teachers as well. Um, Mr. Alvaro, for example, the teachers that that do that extra mile, the same, way, the same way they expect us to go that extra mile, they do that as well in helping us, trying to help us to do the best that we can. But also, not only academically, but um, to build our character as well and uh, start getting us ready for this world. I know that although the IB was pretty challenging, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a lot more challenging things to do in the future. But one thing I'd like to say, I guess, to the rest of the class is that um, take everything one step at a time and uh, to not be so hard on yourself because I feel like we all actually do that a lot. But um, just remember when the hard times come, which will be a lot worse than the IV, I really think. Um, you have to just say, oh, I've come this far. And to keep telling yourself like the progress that you've made, remind yourself. And yeah, thank you, Mama, Rena, Clara, Reka, Luke, everyone. You guys are lit. And as a wise man once said, one love, peace out. <laughs> I don't know how to read this. <laughs> uh, thank you, Aniela. <laughs> uh, and uh, thank you, Miss Craft, for that uh, really, really uh, lovely uh, musical composition. Um, without further ado, can I ask uh, Miss Danvers uh, to speak on behalf of Yale? Right. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, I was really glad when I was asked to talk about Yale for the uh, ceremony. So when I think of Yale, I think of two key words, um, determination and kindness. Determination because um, Yale was determined to excel in French for her diploma. And she worked tirelessly and she was very, very committed to her work for the last two years. And um, kindness because... Uh, Yale yeah, never hesitated in giving up her time, her precious time as a diploma student, to help out her peers. Uh, she would be helping out in the lesson time, but also I saw her countless time uh, sitting in the canteen with her friends and helping them out through the French work and uh, practicing over and over again for the uh, French oral exam. And this is why I know, Yale yeah, that you will be extremely successful. Uh, in life, but especially in your future studies in psychology. I know you're going to Brandeis University and also in your future career. And I really wish you uh, all the best, really, all the best success and uh, all my best wishes for the future. I'm over. I'm finished. <laughs> Yale, do you, uh, you want to say a few words, Yale? Oh. Uh, if 
we get Yale back, we might be able to say, maybe to give her a few words. Um, oh. No? Okay, so uh, Yale, if, you're, if you want to come back, we'll uh, feel free to do that. Uh, so we'd love to hear you say a few words. And thank you, Mr. Amps, for that uh, lovely speech. Um, let's for the moment move on to um, Miss Kennedy to uh, say a few words about Chow, who I believe has actually uh, got up for this, which is which is wonderful news. Okay, thank you. Hi, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me, Mr. Barry, this time? Right, I hope you can. Right, uh, this is a tribute to Chow and his amazing performance in The Legend of the White Snake, where he sang in Mandarin and he danced with perfection. Now, Chow came to the school two years ago and we immediately clicked. He was open to new ideas and ways to perform theatre. And when he was cast as Maria uh, in Murder in the Red Barn, I knew that he was destined to a theatrical life as he threw himself into the role with gusto and enthusiasm. And um, he was also brilliant in film school. He joined it, and um, I really loved working with him on this film called Host, in which he acted and he also co-wrote it. And it was uh, looking at forms of schizophrenia. And then in the second year, he surpassed himself in his collaborative play, um, because he choreographed with the others, his peers, with amazing precision um, in their physical play called Waste. And many of you saw that. Um, however, Chow's final solo bass play on The Seven Deadly Sins was honestly extremely imaginative and it drew on his physical aptitude. Now, I really hope that he does return to the UK and that he can embrace his the, uh, theatrical course that will really help develop his career. And um, But we should have to see. Um, but I really will miss chatting to Chow and teaching him and hearing all about his ideas and really good luck and I know that whatever he decides to do, Chow, you'll be a great success and it's been a real pleasure teaching you and getting to know you and I'm really glad you joined the call because I know how difficult it is. Sometimes you're in the call from China and sometimes you're not. So good luck. We can hear Chow. Hi guys. Oh. Oh my God, it looks so ugly. Anyway, anyway, hi guys. Uh, it's, it's such a pleasure to meet you all, like on this online uh, graduation. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but thank you, Miss Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Barry. I mean, the, I felt like the graduation was on tomorrow, so like I'm in karaoke now. <laughs> so I'm sorry. But anyway, That's thank Chow. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's me. But uh, I mean, like, it's been like a really, I don't know, like a really memorable and uh, it just means a lot for me in the past two years. And everyone I met in London, everyone I, I've been, oh, I don't know, everyone, like I met in Dwight, it just, it's just so meaningful for me. And like, uh, thanks to all the teachers. Especially for Miss Tuna, Miss uh, Kennedy, Mr. Barry, Mr. Uh, Miss Encheva, Miss Lee, and Miss Chris, uh, Miss Lost. I'm sorry, I'm so nervous. But anyway, like, I mean, the first day that I went to the school, I couldn't even like speak uh, English fluently. But like, after like I graduated from the school, I, I feel like it changed my life. Like, I'm now like so brave to express myself, to try everything that I think I'm I, I'm comfortable with. And I feel like my English, my like acting experience, my professional like study has been like improved a lot. I think that's all the contribution and like helping I got from school. Oh, we might come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, I don't know, what should I say? But I love you all and thank you so much, everyone. Thank you and like everything. Sorry, I, I wish I could speak Mandarin and I wish you could all understand that. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Stay safe and healthy. Bye. Bye bye. 
Ciao. Although, you know, you weren't speaking in Mandarin, your message was very much, you know, loud and clear. And it's so, so lovely to see you. Uh, I hope you're doing well in uh, China. And um, very glad that you could join us, even though you were um, apparently going to karaoke. Um, we've got, yes. on, uh, I believe, uh, yes, now, yeah, is that, yeah, are you, are you back now? I just wanted you to maybe come back and just say a few words. Um, with uh, can you hear me? Of course we can. Yeah, so nice. To okay, now you can. Sorry, yeah. I oh, might have a problem. That's okay. Over to you. Uh, okay. Um, well, thank you, Miss Stanvers, for your kind words that were a few minutes ago. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate you. You're such a great role model to me, and to hear you speak such kind words about me is it just means a lot to me. And uh, thank you to all of my teachers, I think, especially for giving me the courage when I couldn't find it and helping me to be confident in myself and my capabilities. And I think not just academically, but for making me feel like I can do anything that I set my mind to and for always being there every step of the way. Like I could name tens of teachers, even in such a small school that were there to support me. And thank you to all my friends as well who we're always there, either shoulder to cry on or for help. And I hopefully I was the same to them. And thank you to my family. And I just hope that everyone is safe and healthy and looking forward to whatever comes next. Thanks, Yale. So lovely to see you uh, and your family. And uh, very much best wishes to you as well. Um, we have our last and final speaker, but last by no means list. Can I please invite uh, Mrs. Boyle to speak on behalf of Rena? Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? We can indeed, Mrs. Boyle. All right. Well, it's, it's a very uh, vexing task to be the last one, but as you said, not the least. So, uh, Rena is for me uh, the epitome of still water. I mean, she runs deep, clear as crystal and serene. Uh, she's calm and measured, but this is just a surface impression. So once you get to know her, and you will get to know her, trust me, she won't let you stay not knowing her, um, there are hidden depths to her. And I would say the most amazing one is her warmth. She's a very warm and caring person. And she's a truly an amazing inquirer. Uh, and a seeker, and her quest for knowledge is astounding. Um, Rena is particularly interested in what makes people tick. So what she wanted to do as a kind of natural progression was to study social sciences at UCL in London. But obviously we are living now in a different world, and obviously we have to see which uni will have the pleasure of educating uh, Rena to make a pun on her educating, educating Rita. Um, and what I would say to Rena, um, just to Rena as a message, make your life um, a masterpiece, Rena. Imagine that there are no limitations. You can do, be, achieve whatever you want. Just be yourself. And my final saying is, let me get it right. Gambate kudasai, as we say it in London. Bye, Rena. I'm not sure she's here because it's late in Japan. Rena, are you, uh, are you there? Just give you a moment or two if you are here. Um. Yeah, are you are you are you are there, Raina? Oh, just got a message. Oh, Mrs. Boyle, apparently that was very good Japanese. <laughs> Arigato, gozaimasu. <laughs> uh, Raina, I think you're currently frozen. I don't know if you're able magically to unfreeze yourself. She's left the meeting, so she's oh, coming back, I think. She's maybe going to come back to the meeting. We'll just give her a minute or two. We're all doing um, very well. I know this maybe run on a little longer than anticipated, but please uh, do uh, 
do bear with us. Um, okay. Okay, uh, Rina, if we, when we come back, um, if you do come back, do let us know, we'll probably get some words. But for the moment, um, thank you to all the uh, staff and students who were able to give, uh, have spoken. Obviously, those were the official speeches. Uh, now, we have Mira and Sterling to give a more personal outlook on perhaps what life was like as a student in the class of 2020 at Dwight School London. Um, hi everyone. So before we begin speaking, uh, we would just like to say a massive, massive thank you to Mrs. Harriman. Um, although this isn't the circumstances that we imagined we'd be graduating in, she's still done so, so much to make sure that our achievements are celebrated in the best way possible during these times. So we owe her a massive, massive thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Harriman. We also want to thank all of the parents and teachers for coming and for supporting us through the ID for the past two years. We couldn't have done it without your support. So the last time that Sterling and I got the opportunity to speak in front of all of you was when we were graduating from M5 and of course when we were prioritizing watching Love Island over our mock exams and even though the circumstances were totally different and we could actually see all your lovely faces in person, um, it's yeah. nice to see how far everyone has come and we are so, so proud of all of you. Though one thing that hasn't changed is our ability as a year to procrastinate. We've always been the year who tries to get out of everything. We've tried to get out of the swimming galas. The dress codes. Every math test. Sports days, of course. Assemblies. We even spent an entire year hiding from Mrs. Boyle when our extended essays were due. We tried to escape everything. So much so that we even managed to get out of doing our final IB exams. But all jokes aside, we have really had an amazing few years as a group. Um, so I have been at Dwight for a very long time, since year three, although not quite as long as Alexander, who has been at Dwight his entire life. Nursery through diploma, all at Dwight School London. But no matter how long you've been here, everyone always feels like a part of the community at Dwight, and that's the really wonderful thing about it. Dwight has given all of us the confidence to go out into the world and be who we want to be. Even during our time here, so many of us have made a difference in the Dwight community. Yael Rheingold has changed Dwight through her music, and we can't wait to see her go on to change the world with her determination and passion. It was always really great to see our classmates taking advantage of all the opportunities at Dwight to help them with their futures. Julia, our resident hairstylist, used her time in biology very, very strategically, practicing her hairstyling skills on anyone who was sitting next to her. Don't worry though, Julia, we won't tell any of your future clients about the time that you accidentally dyed Tess's hair bright orange. It's crazy to think that we started off our diploma experience in a mountain in the Lake District on the DP retreat with Tess's hair bright orange for the whole week. Mira even turned 17 on that mountain, which meant it wasn't long until we were all growing up and getting our driver's license. Soon after Mira got hers, she was driving her car and of course crashing it into the Dwight bus. Thank you, Sterling. Moving on from that, um, as much as we have all grown up and changed, certain things will always stay the same. Uh, Ms. Delgado has taught our year since the very beginning of our upper school experience and has been a constant at Dwight for me and for many of us. Miss, tú siempre tendrá un lugar especial en mi corazón y yo te quiero mucho. Um, Miss, we're so grateful for you. I don't think there's enough words to say it. And Although Ms. Delgado insists that she doesn't have a favorite student, we all know that she does. It's Sterling. I will make no comment on that. Although there have been a few times when I've been the one talking in class. But Alice always seems to get the blame. At least Alice can speak Spanish, though. Abdullah passed that class by memorizing a list of sophisticated sounding words in Spanish to distract from the fact that he really didn't know how to conjugate a verb. And it, it did work, sometimes. Another constant at Dwight for many of us is Miss Ross. Coco, her one dedicated diploma student, has produced some of the most beautiful work of art. And these were complemented nicely by Mama's amazing doodles on the common room whiteboard. Although, for some reason, we've never seen any of Alp's art. Maybe that explains why he dropped the class at the start of last year. 
If the IB gave us the option to drop math, the whole of the standard class would have followed in Alps' footsteps and dropped that class too. Despite Mr. Waddington's best efforts to get us to do past papers, we were convinced that the secret to a high grade in maths was to spend time on our IAs. And with the coronavirus situation going on, it actually turns out that we were right. And so it's a good thing that Aniela and Rana were so persistent that Mr. Waddington spent the majority of our class time on our coursework, which of course he did when he wasn't busy balancing on chairs. While standard math needed that little extra push, the higher math class was a whole other story. Mr. Winter knew just how to get J. Clara and Reka to be competitive enough to succeed, and they ended up being some of the best mathematicians in the school. One thing we never knew for certain, though, was what math class Tarkin was in. He liked joining different math classes as almost as much as he liked watching panda videos on YouTube. Tarkin's panda videos seemed to annoy Mr. Barry the most during our English lessons. The past two years, as our DP coordinator slash English teacher, Mr. Barry always pushed us all to be the very best version of ourselves. And when he wasn't doing that, he was singing in the common room, swing dancing in our classrooms, but mainly getting annoyed with his English class. There was never a single English lesson that didn't feature an argument between Mr. Bowery and Daniel. Daniel will definitely make a good politician in the future. He can always come up with an argument for anything, including why the Northern Line is more beautiful than Wales. <laughs> Although at least Daniel was in class enough to have daily arguments with Mr. Bowery. Chow made it a habit of yeah. coming up to school no later than noon. And when he got there, it was his turn to argue with Mr. Barry and tell him how he had slept through all 726 of the alarms to set on his iPhone. And he's pretty much demonstrated that today, forgetting that it was the graduation and being at a karaoke bar. <laughs> that is when Akmar wasn't arguing with him about getting a deadline extension on top of the deadline he had already asked for, and then still not submitting the work on time. If there's anybody else who knows a thing or two about missing deadlines, it's definitely Chenet. Ms. Murnahan spent most of her time in lessons chasing Janet up for work, and when she wasn't doing that, she was interrupted by Ali and being told to speak slower so that he could copy down everything she said word for word. Someone that no teacher never had to chase up for work was Yael Traeger. If you needed help in anything, she was the girl to go to, especially for psychology. Her notes were always great. And it's a good thing we had her, because for some reason, we always seem to scare off our psych teachers. We've had five over the past two years. Maybe scaring off our teachers was part of our procrastinating? Because we seem to scare off all our science teachers too. We have been through 12 different science teachers since year seven. So cheers to Victoria, who's still managing to study neuroscience despite that. One of the things that I love the most about Dwight is that while we're really big on academic success, we're also really big on community. Like when Claire raided the Tesco's Express to buy all 25 of us an individual snack that we liked as a Christmas present. As we have grown up as a community together, and as we are moving on to the next chapters of our lives, we can't wait to see what all these amazing people will do next. Thank you again to all of our teachers and to all of our parents, not only for coming today, but for giving us the encouragement that we need to become who we're going to be. And our final words, if you haven't already heard them a thousand times from the man himself, are go subscribe to Luke's YouTube channel, Luke AS. And now we even get a preview of his editing skills with the graduation video put together by Luke and Tess. We really hope you enjoy it. Thank you. We are hopefully going to go to the video. This might take a few seconds, so everyone bear with us.
wonderful video now before we move on i would if she's still there just like to invite rena back to say a few words rena sorry we missed you but um uh please feel free i'd love to hear your final thoughts uh on your time at dwight um hi sorry my my phone was so bad but thank you for the wonderful speech miss Boyle. it really means a lot and i'm so glad that you are my english teacher and Thank you for always being there for me since day one, even though I couldn't speak English and all I say was yes or no, but thank you so much. And of course, all the te I'd like to thank all the teachers who supported me all the time and also my friends always who always stayed with me. Thank you. And as Miss Boyle said, I'm not sure if I can go back to London for uni, but 
I really hope I can visit and meet you guys soon. And yeah, I really wish you all the best of luck and thank you very much. Ria, thank you for uh, saying those final words. Thank you as well for being one of the core members of the Wednesday study group. Uh, who always uh, met me after school. Um, we are wrapping up. Thank you very much for your patience. I've got a few words of thanks for people. Uh, firstly, thank you huge amount to Tess and Luke uh, for coordinating and all the students who submitted photos for that wonderful, wonderful video. Thank you to Mira and Sterling for your insight into life at Dwight, that was very, very illuminating. We are still very much uh, hoping to hold an actual graduation later in the year once government rules allow us. So hopefully there will be a time when we are all together in person. But in the meantime, uh, every student should have received a pack with your leavers hoodie, uh, your yearbook, your leaver certificate and a little cake keepsake. Um, at this point, I do want to have a big, big thank you to the Dwight Parents Association for contributing to the leavers hoodies as a good luck and farewell gift that has been hugely, hugely appreciated by um, all the students. I hope also the students have, you also received some, hopefully, some congratulatory chocolates and uh, hopefully um, you should have received by now. Um, from today, we will be posting on the Dwight's social media platform posts about each and every student, so each one of you, um, and your plans for next year. So we'd invite all students and parents to post their congratulations Give them a like uh, and we'll also create a page on the school website dedicated to the graduates. I'd also like to thank the graduation committee who've been working with Mrs. Harriman since February. Uh, Abdullah, Aliche, Alexander, Julia, Luke, Sterling, Tess and Victoria and led by Mira who's been dedicated, uh, efficient and enthusiastic throughout. There is also one person who without this, this would not have happened whatsoever and that is very much uh, Mrs. Harriman, she's been absolutely instrumental to the whole process. Uh, she's very much kept me on my toes. And I, you know, very much, this whole thing is very much down to her incredible organisation and her very much her energy. But the students have their opportunity to do a video. Well, of course, although this is your graduation and although the teachers uh, are very much not necessarily were with you, we wanted to show a little bit of respect to maybe a little memento of yours in order that you won't forget us. So um, thank you also to Stanley for being there in the background, but uh, we're going to show you a short video. I have one quick rule. If you could, throughout the video, make sure that all your microphones are muted, so of course we don't have any uh, there, and that once the video has finished and you see the words end, flip up, please let's all take our microphones off and give everyone a little round of applause. Um, but without further ado, Stanley, if you're able to load video as a secret surprise to all the Dwight students, the class of 2020, we have a little video gift for you.
Well done. I just want to thank you very much. Um, everyone, I just wanted to uh, say a few few final things. Um, uh, please, a uh, huge thanks to Mr. Carpenter, who was the editor of that wonderful, wonderful video. Thank you for all the staff. And also, Miss Lust's original idea. So, a big thanks to those two for doing it. Um, uh, also, thank you as well uh, to Miss Corbin for her words uh, at the start. Um, that is the end. Um, I, D2, uh, class of 2020, it's been a real pleasure. Um, I hope you've enjoyed um, your graduation. I know it would have been wonderful to be with you, but I hope this online graduation uh, gives you the kind of respect um, and, you know, very much kind of love that we hold, hold you all in. Um, so thank you. Thank you to everyone who attended. Thank you for all your kind words. And uh, we will see you again sometime very, very soon. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.